Hello, hello! This is Judy, and welcome to The Soccer Legacy, a dark fantasy novel, work in progress. This channel was created to share the creative processes that make up The Soccer Legacy, and more specifically, to share these creative processes with the end goal to help you with yours. The question in this video is how to create a fantasy creature for your novel. The purpose of this presentation is to share an approach and technique for creating a unique fantasy creature. This process uses a different method. Rather than borrowing from mythology, folklore, or cultural references, this method looks within a species. At the end of this video, you'll be able to apply this process to your story and create unique, fantastical, and specially designed creatures. How was the creature Nora the fantasy spider for the unpublished novel The Sarkin Legacy created. Let's go through that process. As the Sarkin Legacy, as the story evolves, the antagonist is condemned to existence in a marsh. If he leaves the marsh, he will start to decompose. His skin will start to become leathery, darken, and appear to melt. His bones will start to dissolve. The soft body parts will mummify and his hands will skeletonize. The spell can only be broken by the spellbreaker that's contained in a misappropriated ancient book. He needs the book to obtain the spellbreaker, to return to human form and leave the marsh without dissolving, to pursue his agenda, revenge. The environment of the antagonist places limits on his choice of candidates. The task of the successful candidate will have to travel long distances, travel undetected, find the protagonist, find the book, retrieve the book, and bring it back to the antagonist. And considering the animals available in the marsh, mink, raccoon, possum, muskrat, beaver, frog, turtle, bird, insect, spider, and finally a selection of amphibians. The spider was chosen. A spider can survive for as long as 60 days without food and can travel long distances. They typically crawl up to a high location, stick their back end in the air, and release a thin line of silk. Sometimes a spider will travel for long distances, across oceans for hundreds of miles, and at remarkably high altitudes. So let's examine the physical features of the spider. There are two segments for the body, eight jointed legs, simple eyes, an exoskeleton, and pincer-like fangs. Let's use these physical features as a framework for the fantasy creature. The first order of business is to decide on the two body sections. There are two sections, the abdomen and the cephalothorax. Now, will the creature be small and venomous? Will it be a large hunting spider or bird eater? Will it be yellow and pale, allowing one to see the internal pulsating organs? In the Sarkin legacy, the spider has to grow big enough to battle humans. Therefore, the segments for the body will have to be large. The next feature we're going to look at are the eyes. Keep in mind most spiders have poor visual acuity. Here are some examples of eye configurations of different spider species. For the eyes of the creature Nora, it was necessary to go outside of the species. The eye features needed to meet the requirements of the scene were not available within the species of different spiders. This scene was a location where the protagonist had to develop specific skills, achieve a spiritual enlightenment, and come to terms with their destiny. To achieve these objectives, the eyes of a fly was chosen. The eyes of the fly can recognize even the slightest movements in a wide field, allowing the insect to see a far wider range as well as detect and react to movement at a quicker pace than species with simple eyes. The improved eyesight adds a level of complexity to the creature's prowess and delivers additional challenges to the protagonist and moves the protagonist along their character art. The next are the legs. In some species, if they have slender legs, in some species they will break off and the lost limb is not regenerated. What about hairy legs? Here's an interesting fact. Spiders use the hair on their legs to listen to sound. They can listen, feel, smell, and taste with their hairy legs. 
Now imagine eggs residing at the base of the hairs. What type of problems could result? Sever a leg and dozens of hungry baby spiders are released. Next are the spines. In some species, for example the grasshopper, the spines can activate the fast extensor muscle causing the insect to jump. What additional challenges will the spines of your creature produce in your story? The fantasy creature Nora needed to have spines that were able to spear protective equipment, cut flesh, and penetrate bone. The next element feature we're going to look at are the exoskeletons. Some species eat their molted exoskeletons. For others, their exoskeleton grows throughout their lives. Keep in mind that spiders molt and shed their hard exterior in order to grow in size. The new exoskeleton at this stage is often very soft and vulnerable until the exoskeleton hardens. How could this vulnerability play into your scene as the action unfolds? To create a more bold and demanding encounter, look outside the species, in this instance to snakes. Their bodies are covered with scales of various shapes and sizes. Perhaps with the fantasy creature you're creating, their skin is made up of these tiny interlocking shields. The interlocking scales, the interlocking scales can make for a more challenging adversary. Add more levels of complexity to the conflict, the scene, and character development. Now the final feature we're going to look at are the spider's pincers. Here are some examples of spincers. Think about this. To what extent will the pincer feature endanger the protagonist when they encounter the creature? Should your protagonist engage the claw or the fang-like trait of the creature, what attributes or skills of the protagonist are highlighted or played down? As you're writing your scene and creating your fantasy creature, think about how can I get across what the characters are feeling and going through. Let's take that a step further. How can I get my readers to feel what my characters are experiencing and provide my reader with their own emotional journey? What details is your protagonist seeing that others do not? How are they seeing these details in their unique way? Each physical characteristic of your fantasy creature is an opportunity to explore your character's unique emotional and transformative journey as they come up against the servant of the antagonist. It is not limited to the protagonist facing the creature. We also have to consider the secondary creatures within the scene who are witnessing the event. The interaction between the protagonist and each physical attribute of the creature can create an emotional milestone and provoke highly emotional feelings. To take this a step further, each emotional milestone can become a point within the plot and subplots of your scene and deliver for your character and your reader a realization through the self-discovery experience. As each physical attribute of the fantasy creature is presented to the reader, the reader is placed in an inescapable sequence of turbulent feelings. Each attribute provides the writer with an opportunity to delve deeper into the character. At the same time your readers are witnessing and experiencing the journey of your transformation taking place within your characters. Well that's all for today's presentation. I hope this process was of some service to you and I'm sure it's given you a lot to think about. For the next video I'd like to delve into the character's backstory. To prepare for this think about the mission statement of your novel. In other words after your reader is finished reading your novel, what do you want your reader to come away with? Till next time, soar high.